Hello, this will be a video on the updates to the Ship Performance Analysis Tool, or SPAT. I'm going to go through the new features, the changes, and of course the updated data, which includes the new ships like the, uh, the Defender and the Mantis, uh, and any changes that CIG made. And uh, really excited about this because I think that this is going to be even more useful than it is than it was before to people. Uh, on this page, I just want to remind you that to make it work, you need to make your own copy. So you go to File, Make a Copy, or you can just use the copy link here and it'll autom automatically make you a copy. Um, there's a README, so don't forget, uh, go to our Discord if you have questions or you want to, us to fix something that's wrong. And uh, that's pretty much it for this. Okay, so Comparison tab has changed a lot, and hopefully it's even more useful to people. Um, so I'm going to go through and explain it. You can still select two ships. You can actually select three now if you want. So you, let's say if we wanted to add the arrow in there. And then the gray dashed line is the new ship. Uh, so I'll go ahead and s I like to keep it on uh, the average of all ships. And then this gray dashed line kind of like puts things into perspective. It's like, all right, maybe, you know, before I could see that the Gladius had better missiles than the Defender but I didn't realize that both of them are actually below average for all the single player car combat ships. So, you know, that's that's good to have that third call, third baseline column in there so you kind of put things into perspective. Um, but there's still a lot of options with this. You don't have to do it this way, and I'll show you everything. Uh, you still have your notes here. So, you know, for example, the Defender does not have separate body and nose HP. A lot of people haven't noticed that, but that's actually a really big disadvantage. Um, yeah, it just has nose HP or body. It doesn't really matter which one it, you consider it to be, but it's only got one health pool, pool before it explodes. Uh, and that's not even considering the wings, uh, which I tested as well. All right, so average all includes. So this shows you all the ships listed in this third column here. So you know what everything's being averaged to prov provide these values. Um, another big thing that's new that is really useful is you can now decide exactly what you want to show up on this graph here. So if you want to, you know, add in length, inverted length, beam and height, you can go for it. You can decide what you want. And because of that, I've added a bunch of new things like cargo, you know, not really, in my opinion, applicable to combat, but some people might want to see it. So now you can see what, you know, <laughs> uh, obviously not, neither of these ships have any cargo, but there you go. Now you can see it. So that's really, um, interesting so uh okay and i will go through i think now uh some of the new parameters so i separated out the dimensions so this is just your classic dimensions so like this length is the exact length in meters of the gladius the defender and the average right so that's simple um, and then of course there's the average so you just average those three values together simple um dimensions inverted right inverted dimensions so um, these, these, uh, dimensions, unlike everything else here, uh, smaller is better, right? So that can be confusing on the graphs. So like, let's say I put length, beam, and height here. So someone might look at this and they might think that, oh, the defender is better because everything else bigger is better. The defender is better than the gladius when it comes to length, but that's actually not true because having a shorter length is better because you have less target profile and, you know, to some extent can fit into smaller places. Uh, so to make it so that on the graph, smaller dimensions is better, I inverted them. And the way that I inverted them was basically I took the longest. So um, in that, it's actually the uh, Vanguard. Uh, so the length of the Vanguard is 38 and you subtract this number from the length of the vanguard so you'd get 18 well oh yeah there you go <laughs> 18 okay see so yeah you subtract sorry i had the wrong thing clicked so <laughs> the length of the vanguard is 38 and you subtract 20 and then you get 18 that makes sense um so the vanguard would have a score of zero so it would be down here and then things would increase as their length got smaller. So that's that's inverting so that it it correctly shows the Gladius is better than the Defender. Um, so it's just a little less confusing. Sorry for the long explanation there, but I get questions about that all the time. Um, 
Acceleration, so here's acceleration in every direction. That's off the G meter, pretty simple. Average is just the, all those values average together. Some people don't like that, obviously, because they like how, you know, think forward and backward or, you know, they want to be able to see the differences between them. So you can just do that, right? So now you can see um, that the Gladius kicks the defender's ass in uh, acceleration in every single direction. Okay, and uh, you can average it, like I said, right? Simple average. And then this combined, so this is like the maximum you can pull if you combine, basically, if you use all your thrusters that you have available. Um, and I call this going into the groove. Um, and it's actually easy to uh, use a formula to, for, to predict what it's gonna be, but of course I verify in game. Um, and so this is the combined acceleration. And keep in mind that this is unboosted, so it would just be 22. Um, is what you'll get on your G meter in a Gladius when you are max performing the spacecraft or being in the groove, as I like to call it. Uh, okay, um, overheat resist. So this is time to overheat. So if you um, just boost forward with nothing else going on, this is how long before your ship overheats. That's pretty much it. Um, and then same for every direction and then average. So bigger is better because it's longer before you overheat. Uh, most ships are almost the same on these. There are some exceptions, though. Rote V, that's just rotational velocity, pitch, yaw, roll, so how fast something can uh, rotate in any of the directions, and you can separate them out as one. Shield score, that's based on the, the that's scaled based on, like, the best shields, basically, uh, and it's scaled according to HP, um, by, according to each size, so... Uh, armor score, all armor is one right now, so that's just a placeholder until they actually implement it. Hull, so hull body and hull nose. So the two ways to kill a ship are to shoot the body or to shoot the nose. With the exception of like the Defender, the Merlin, and the Archimedes, those just have a combined nose and uh, body score. Uh, so if you shoot the nose of the Gladius, nine times it'll explode. If you shoot, sorry, six times, you shoot the body, nine times it'll explode and then the average, of course. Gun score, uh, that is just adding up the um, the score. So I basically scale it according to the Klaus and Warner line. So it's exactly 50% higher for each size, and then I add those values together. Uh, missile score, so that does include torpedoes. Um, I've got turrets on here. If you really care about turrets, then uh, have at it. Uh, EMP, power, cooler, same thing. It's like the best in slot components. Um, hydrogen fuel, that was there before, but quantum fuel is new, right? So there are some differences. Oh yeah, take a look. The uh, Defender does have more, way more fuel than most other ships uh, of this class, so that's pretty good. Quantum speed, cruise speed, and uh, cargo, right? So those are all the new things. Okay, one last thing for this tab, scaling. So right now it's at my preferred two times the third column. Okay, so what this means is um, it's taking this third column and it's putting it in the middle, right? So it's putting it 50% on each axis. And then it's scaling the axis according to that, right? So it's intentionally making it so that everything is relative to this middle average, okay? So um, that means that overheat resist, it, this is 9.5, and then these two are below 9.5, right? Okay. So this is new. So if you wanted the classic look, you could go to uh, maximum of ships compared, and then this is sort of like zooming in. So you can see the differences between the ships a little bit easier. So that some people might prefer that. Um, if you just do two times the third column, it looks the same as before, right? It depends on what ship you choose. So let's say you want to go to, we're going to do the uh, Sentinel now, right? Oh, look at that. See, you got stuff off the chart, right? Because it's scaling based on this third column. So the Sentinel's values are over twice that of the average, you know, high deviation, right? So it's doing that. It gets even worse with some of them, like take a look at the eclipse here, you know, like that's not very usable, right? So what um, the alternate does, you go two times the third, 
column alternate, which is my favorite, and it'll scale everything according to the third column except when you have a deviation like that, and then it'll scale it according to the highest value. And so you can still see that that is like a really significant deviation, but it's also on the graph, so it just looks better, right? Uh, so there you go. That's that is uh, the comparison tab. I think that's everything you need to see for that. Okay, all ships. This is a new tab, right? So this is the same data converted into percentages and displayed for every single ship at once, right? Uh, so here we go. You just take each of these parameters that you check, and again, you can uh, select whatever you want and then it stacks them on top of each other. So imagine that this 0% is now your, whatever baseline you select here. So I chose average of all ships. You could do it of fighters, uh, whatever you wanted. So this 0% represents the average value for all ships. So if some, like let's take missiles. Let's say your missiles are above that average. So the percentage above that average is gonna be how much this blue part is. Um, so the Eclipse is obviously way above average. Um, the Delta has less missiles than average, so it's below. And then they just stack like that. So things above average stack above the 0%. Things below average stab, stack below the 0%. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully that gives you kind of a visual representation of different ships. Um, if you just want, want to look at one stat at a time, you can do that. And I find that very useful sometimes. It's like, hey, what has the best guns? And this makes it really easy to see. It's like I can see instantly that the Harbinger, the Sentinel, the Warden, they have the best guns, right? And I know some people are probably going to get mad that I just said that, um, but this is talking about DPS, right? It's not talking about the fact that you can gimbal it or not. That There's really no way for me to put that as uh, on here. So yeah, you can just as before you can customize exactly what you want to show up on here um, I had so here's an example so yeah turret damage score is like let me just throw a few more on here turret damage score like look at that that's and that's because like one turret the hurricane is just obscenely above average right because it's the only one that has those four weapons so what have you said to yourself was like, oh, I I don't think that turrets should count as much as other things. I don't want them to be as noticeable, right? So you can actually customize that. You just go over here, it's like, I only think turrets are 10%, you know, one-tenth as important as everything else. And you could do that. And look at that. Now it's exactly how you want it. So that's new. What if I said, hey, I think shields are five times as important as everything else. There you go. Now you can do whatever you want to your heart's desire, which is the whole philosophy that we took in this version. You can customize it um, and use it however you want to. If you really care about cargo, you know, you can add cargo in. Um, the choice is yours. Okay, so that pretty much covers all the new stuff. I'll go through this other stuff. The turn battle tab is still the same as before when I described it in the original videos. Um, so you have the nose-to-nose -nose zone, which is where thing uh, ships will, no kidding, be nose-to-nose -nose almost every time. The advantage zone, where one ship can stay ahead of the other's nose, but the opposite is not true. And the push zone, where no ship, neither ship can uh, stay ahead of the, uh, the other. Um, and then this gives you the like acceleration required to do that. Um, I explained it all in the other videos, so I'm not going to go through it, but these are like EM, EM diagrams if you're used to those. And you just select which ship up here, and then like whether you want to do combined inward acceleration or just forward. Um, whether, okay, so what if your, your opponent is, you know, new and he only uses yaw, you know, that kind of changes things. So I'll well, just wait for it to process there you go so you can see that makes it a lot of, your opponent's only using yaw you have a much better chance of getting an advantage on him so that's that's interesting to see okay so range battle uh so you go and you take a sorry about that 
you just select your ships and then it'll give you a visual depiction of the ranges of all the missiles and their damage. Um, these require, require to assure kill. These are very conservative uh, and I use those based on camera rolls, ship toughness, uh, testing data to figure out what, what those would be. Um, basically just like averaging all of his things and then figuring out, um, you know, formula that kind of conservatively makes sure like, yes, this, this many size Raptor fours will kill a stalker. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much that. So like if you wanted to change it, Delta it takes a while. Sorry. There you go. So now you can see like the stalker can touch a, touch a Delta at like 10,000 meters and Delta isn't going to be able to do anything to counter that. So that's important to know, right? Um, and then you might be wondering, is like, well, what about detection range? Well, or sorry, what about lock-on range? The max range listed in the stats is the max lock-on range. I tested it. It's almost exact. Like, signature doesn't really seem to matter right now. Um, okay. So I think that's everything. Uh, as usual, please, um, if you have feedback or corrections or anything, please let us know on Discord. Um, because we are continually trying to improve and this relies on updates from you all. So here's the data tab. You can see all the data and if you think something's wrong, let us know um, because that's how we keep it up to date. And I hope that some of you like this. All right, have a good night.